Okay, so imagine you're going to catch a bus, you arrive at the bus stop and you've just missed the bus, it's just driving away. And naturally you're quite frustrated here because, say if the buses come every 10 minutes, you're going to have to wait a full 10 minutes until the next, next bus arrives. It's the worst possible outcome here. And if you'd arrived and the bus was nowhere to be seen, then you'd expect not to have to wait a full 10 minutes, but on average you would expect to wait 5 minutes, so half of that time. So I'll just draw out a little picture, just make this really clear. Imagine buses are coming every 10 minutes and you arrive and you've just missed a bus, so you've just missed this bus, you've got to wait a full 10 minutes. Whereas if you arrive, so you arrive in this interval here, on average you'd expect to arrive kind of in the middle, so sort of by symmetry here, you'd expect to only have to wait for 5 minutes. Now, the inspection paradox is really interesting. This describes sort of similar scenarios here, only instead of, say if you've arrived and you've not just missed the bus, instead of having to wait for half of the average time, you would actually expect on average maybe you'd have to wait slightly more than half the time, which is kind of somewhat paradoxical, because this is our intuition, especially from the case where buses arrive at regular intervals like this. Of course, buses don't arrive at perfectly regular intervals. We'll have a look at an example like this in a sec. Then we'll also have a look at another, even more sort of striking example where it's not just more than half of the average time you'd expect to wait, say if you've not just missed the bus, but basically where buses come every 10 minutes on average. But then if you arrive and you've not missed the bus, you just arrive at some uniformly random time, then you're actually going to have to expect to wait longer than 10 minutes on average. Whereas if you get there and you've just missed a bus, you'd only expect to wait 10 minutes. So that's and like an even more striking, stronger form of the inspection paradox we'll do as our second example. But we'll just start with a really simple first example. We'll say that buses come at 12 minute intervals followed by 8 minute intervals. So they come every 12 minutes, then there's an 8 minutes. So hopefully you can see here, if you've just missed the bus, how long is your average wait time? Well, it's either going to be 12, but it's going to be 8 minutes. You don't know which bus you've missed necessarily. We do half times 12 plus a half plus 8, and we get 10 minutes, as you would expect, as your average wait time here if you've just missed a bus. So now you'd expect perhaps, okay, based on this previous example using our intuition, you'd expect to have to wait 5 minutes on average. But let's run the calculation. So we arrive at some random time, uniformly random in this. 20 minute interval. So there's actually a, it's not a 50 50 chance of lying in each interval. Here it's 12 out of 20, which gives you a probability of 0.6, and here you've got 8 out of 20, which gives you a probability of 0.4 for each of these different intervals. So you're actually more likely, when you arrive at a uniformly random time, you're more likely to arrive in this larger, longer time period. So now if we calculate the expected wait time, 0.6, your probability of arriving in this 12 minute interval, and then hopefully you can see you would have, on average expect to wait 6 minutes if you arrive in this interval. And then for the 8 minute interval, probability 0.4 of landing in there, and on average you'd expect to wait half of that, 4 minutes. So then we do this calculation, we get 3.6 plus 1.6. This gives you 5.2 minutes, or if you prefer, 5 minutes and 12 seconds. Which is, contrary to our intuition from the regularly spaced buses, this is slightly more than half of your average wait time. So on average you wait for 10 minutes if you've just missed a bus, then say you arrive at some uniformly random time, independent of the buses, you get there, you can't see a bus, you'd actually expect to wait not half of this time, but slightly more, because you're more likely to arrive in this larger interval of time. So now let's finish by having a look at quite an extreme example of the inspection paradox, where basically if you arrive and you've just missed a bus, you'd expect on average to have to wait 10 minutes, but then if you arrive and you haven't just missed a bus, there's no bus in sight, you'd actually expect to have to wait not just more than half of that 10 minute average, but well, actually you'd have to expect to wait more than 10 minutes if there's no bus in sight. So let's see how we can make this possible with an example. So 
we'll say that t in minutes is the a, a discrete random variable which tells us how long you have to wait. So the probability that t equals five minutes equals 0.8. Probability that t equals 10 minutes is 0.1. And the probability that t equals 50 minutes is also 0.1. So this is quite an interesting distribution. You've got a lot of short intervals, then you've got one really long interval. We'll find out these actually cancel out when you take the expectation. So the expectation of t, the expected waiting time, this is 0.8 divided by 5 plus 0.1 times 10 plus 0.1 times 50. So you get 4 plus 1 plus 5, which is 10 minutes. So this is, if you just missed the bus, is that you expect to wait 10 minutes. So now, if I draw out the picture now, this will get quite interesting because we've got quite a few different possible lengths of time we might have to wait. So if you imagine 10 buses come, you'd expect eight of them to come with a five minute wait time. You'd expect one of them out of every 10, this is a one in 10 chance, to come with a 10 minute wait time. And you'd expect one of them to come with a 50 minute wait time. So let's say you've got a 50 minute wait time here, we'll draw in a 10 here, and then we'll draw in eight little five minute time intervals as well. So that only needs to be 10. So here we've got 10, and these are all five minutes. So now we've worked out the expected wait time if you've just missed the bus on average is gonna be 10 minutes. And let's have a look now, say you arrive at some random time between buses here, and I'll just say as well here at this stage is, you imagine that the buses have been running for a long time, so you've reached some sort of stationary distribution. So don't worry if you don't know what that means, but basically you can make all of this much more rigorous using renewal theory. But this should still be accessible if you don't know what all of that means, because we'll just have a look at, imagine this is basically an average window of time and then you arrive at some sort of uniform time in here. So there's a few different places you can arrive. You either arrive in the 50 minute interval, in which case you'd expect on average to have to wait half of this, about 25 minutes. So you arrive in the 10 minute interval, you expect to have to wait five minutes. If you arrive in one of the five minute intervals, you expect you have to wait only half of five minutes, so two and a half minutes there. So now, let's say you haven't just missed a bus, so you're arriving at this uniform random time here, what's the probability that you're in one of these five minute intervals? Well, you've got eight of these, so this is a total of 40 minutes. And then you've got a 10 minute interval and a 50 minute, so it's a total of 100 minutes. So basically the chance of being in a five minute interval is 40 out of 100 or 0.4. So now your expected wait time is gonna be 0.4 times half of five, which is 2.5. And then your expected wait time in here is five minutes. Your chance of being in here is 10 out of 100 is 0.1. And then your contribution from the 50 minute interval, there's actually a 50 out of 100, so a half chance, 0.5 probability that you go into this really long interval. And your contribution from this is half of that on average, 25 minutes. If you work this out, this gives us one plus 0.5 that's 12.5, and we add these together, we actually get an average of 14 minutes. And this is where you haven't missed a bus. So this should be really striking now. So you arrive at the bus stop, you've just missed a bus, you expect to have to wait only 10 minutes. However, if you arrive at the bus stop, you haven't just missed a bus, well, you're quite likely to have landed in this really long time interval here, and you have quite a long time interval to have to wait on average. So if you haven't just missed the bus, you, this is a worse scenario than if you have just missed the bus. It's very, very strange, very counterintuitive to our intuition based on buses coming at regular increments. So here, because this interval is so huge, you've got 
half of the time you'd expect to land in this one and then you have that 25 minute wait on average so this this is so extreme that actually on average arriving at a random time uniformly in this whole interval you expect to wait longer than if you've just missed a bus because if you've just missed a bus this is good because this means actually you're say you're quite likely to have maybe just missed this one or any of these these would be quite favourable buses. So say if you've just missed this one, you've only got to wait five minutes. Even this one, you've only got to wait ten minutes, which is pretty good. So this phenomenon where you're more likely to pick if you arrive at random, you're more likely to pick this kind of larger interval, you're more likely to arrive in this large time interval. This is something called size bias. And this actually comes up in a few different settings in statistics. So I'll just share very briefly a quick example which I think is quite interesting is size bias so a similar sort of phenomenon going on there so if, if you imagine you're trying to find out the average class size in a school and you ask the teachers and then you ask the students and you do two different samples one from teachers one from students you might actually get slightly different outcomes so if you imagine you've got a few small classes and then you've got a few really big classes if you ask a teacher, then these small classes are fairly likely to be represented. Whereas if you ask students, if you pick a student uniformly at random, they're very likely to be in one of the large classes. So when you ask the students, they're much more likely to tell you they'll give you a larger expected class size compared with the teachers. It's not that anyone's being dishonest here, it's just that randomly choosing students, this is biased towards these. So something, this is something that you've got to be really wary of. It's definitely worth knowing about size bias especially if you're carrying out some sort of sample or interpreting some data from a sample, you've got to be wary of this kind of subtle bias here, how it can affect your results.